Welcome everyone back to another episode of the AI Marketing Stacks. And we are all very, very lucky to have Molly Mahoney here with us today, who is amazing. If you don't know her, I'm shocked because she seems to be <laughs> omnipresent and everywhere. Um, but Molly is amazing with all things social media, um, all things AI. She's been using AI to do social media for a long time. She's got an incredible story. Um, just an incredible presence and, and personality and also just a badass marketer, right? She seems very, Thanks. you know, bubbly and happy on, on the outside, but I know she's a shark. Uh, <laughs> her uh, her funnels and everything she's doing is is really smart and really dialed in. So um, it's just a pleasure to have you on. So thanks for being here. Hey, so stoked. I'm going to go with that. Like I'm a dolphin on the outside, but a shark underneath. Watch out. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's good. So what are you working on right now, currently in your business that has you the most excited? Actually, so I will say, and this is the first time I'm really talking about this, but we are bringing on some new team members to help with our partner program because it's something that has really kind of sat there waiting for someone to like take charge of it. So we're moving some things around so that we can really make sure we have this like huge amount of people who love our stuff and our members who love our stuff and want to promote it. And so we're bringing in someone to solely focus on that. And um, I just see that our team is just getting more jazzed about taking ownership over things. And so it's kind of, it's been really, really cool. So we're putting, we've spent a lot of time putting some automation and we've got really great products and all these things now dialed in and proven and all of that. And so I'm excited about this next level of getting the ability for other, like us to be able to support other people who want to share it and really pay them a lot, which will be awesome nice. too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I love that. And I have a follow-up question on that, but first I, I kind of give a very high level view of who you are and what you do, but narrow it down a little bit for someone who doesn't know your world and what you teach and who you help. Give me a sense of like, who do you serve? And then also what are some of like the, the products or, or the ecosystem that you have to help with that? Yeah. So most of our clients are course creators, coaches, creative entrepreneurs. We help a lot of marketing agency owners. So people who are willing to be the face of a brand work really well for us. So expert-based entrepreneurs are really uh, the people who do the best with us. Like we have some people who sell e-commerce products, but they're really um, forward-facing in the brand. They're building a personal brand, which has been really really awesome. And I started as a musical theater performer way back in the day and took what I was doing um, on tour and on in shows and on stage and brought that out to California from New York and started teaching singing lessons and career coaching for other performers. And then in 2016, when Facebook Live came out, we switched everything. So rather than helping performers to run a business, we started helping business owners to perform. And it was a really good change. So we launched a program called Camera Confidence. Uh, we did $50,000 in our first three months, which was really exciting. Awesome. And since then, we've actually just kind of dug in, not even kind of, we've actually really dug in on the cutting edge of whatever the new tech is and combined it with humanness. So mm -hmm. when Facebook Live came out, we went all in on that. When Messenger bots came out with Facebook and now they're on Instagram, we went all in on that. And we, you know, many chat even paid me to go speak on their behalf and like represent them. So we went really big into the tech side, but combining that human aspect with it. And with the whole magic of AI in 2021, we launched our first AI membership. And it's been really cool to be able to help people see that they can use AI, but it can actually help to encourage them to be more powerful humans and more authentic and better versions of themselves. So now our main offers are focused around organic content and social sales, because we realized while I could help people with their videos, if they didn't actually make offers around their videos, the videos didn't matter. So we still help people with video and with creating content, but it's really about the sales piece around the content that helps make things extra awesome. What What is it do you think um, is going on inside the mind of Molly, the magical mind of Molly that allows you to be uh, like kind of ahead of the curve, right? Because a lot of people yeah. were not thinking about AI until chat GPT, right? So yeah. what what is going on in your mind to be so tech focused, to be so... Um, kind of be on that cutting edge. 
Yeah. I, so we have a phrase that we use a lot in our community, which is the more fun I have, the more money I make. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for me, I actually just really, I enjoy it. And I, I enjoy like figuring new things out. And I know it's not for everyone, but that, that gives, they can take a break on it because I'll figure it out and then I'll tell you. Right. But I do think that as these things are moving so quickly, one thing that's a little different is that I see the, it's kind of like a beautiful mind. Like I see like the fast path to the, the tech side working together, but then I see how human beings can actually benefit from it without sacrificing our souls. So it's mm -hmm. like, I look for ways that we can take this super, super fast paced opportunity and weave in the the connection and the relationship piece with it. And I think that's a big difference where some people who are more focused on like the heart centered type of um, coach or, you know, that type of a thing that's really more human based, they may be afraid of the tech, but because I really love it, but I also really love the weirdo human stuff. It's like, I like to see how those two things can meet, mm. um, which make things makes things work even better, I think. Nice. Let's let's venture into some uh, risky territory and okay. start making some predictions. But okay. where, where do you, um, from your vantage point, where do you see things? You know, the world of marketing and the world of AI. Where do you see these things going? And where do you see, um, you know, if someone is sitting here, maybe they're a freelancer or they're a business owner, and they're like, I want to be on the cutting edge. Like, I want to, I want to be ahead of the curve, right? Mm -hmm. I want to skate to where the puck is going what is kind of going on in your mind when you think about like, this is the way marketing is moving. This is where AI is moving. This is where you need to be putting your time and attention. Yeah. So as you know, one of the biggest things that people are talking about is the fact that data kind of is king at the moment. So when we're helping people to, first of all, is my video freezing a lot? I feel it's like freezing on my side. I'm just going to shut everything else down that I have going on. Sorry. Yeah. Let me, let me, um, I don't know if it's on my end or no, I think it's mine. I, yours looks fine. It just looks like my video is freezing, which I never actually see that happening. So I'm just okay. shutting shut everything down. down too. And if you're listening to this in the podcast and this isn't cut out, then you get to experience what it's like. to listen to us talk. If not, we can edit it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we're better now. So when it comes to where things are going, a lot of people are talking about data and I do think the data is important. I don't think it's the most important piece. So I'm going to tell you what's actually more important than the data, mm. but in terms of creating AI content, even if we just focus on the content piece, we do a lot with using AI for your operations. We do a lot with using AI for your sales. We do a lot with using AI for market research, but if we're just going to talk about content, for this moment right now, when we're helping people to create AI content, one of the biggest complaints that we get is, well, this just sounds like AI. Like we all now have these radars, like we've all learned very quickly how to spot the AI because it talks about the treasure troves and, you know, all of the supercharging yes. and all of the things, right? Right. Unlocking. So, yeah. Unlocking all of the game changing treasure troves, <laughs> right? And we all know, we kind of get this feeling where we're like, oh, that seems like AI. So what has happened is because everyone has the ability to use this, the internet is getting filled with this zombie AI content, which doesn't do us any good because it just crowds the space. It's not unique, all of that. So when it comes to the data set piece of things, one thing that's really been helpful is when people can actually load their own content that they had created in the past into these systems, then we can better teach the AI system to work in alignment with who we are or the type of voice that we already have. If you don't already have content created in the past, it's a lot harder to do that unless you're really crafting something based on someone else's data set, right? So the data set has been like a big thing. The problem is, is that in a couple of years, or I mean, in like a couple of months, all of the data is going to be loaded into the internet. And that's no longer going to be something that's going to push you to the front of the curve. And so this is where it's really important to actually figure out who the heck you are as a human being and figure out your weird essence so that we can use that as a differentiator moving forward and combine that with the AI. Because eventually all of the systems are going to be locked into place. Everything's going to be you know, datafied out and there's going to be nothing left to make things 
really unique or make things something that people actually gravitate toward because everything's going to be the same. Let me, yeah, that's a really, that's really, really interesting. I, my mind is buzzing with follow-up questions. One is, so let, let's, let's dial it back. So you said loading up your data, right? Yeah. Into, into AI. So it sounds more like you. For someone who's listening to this and they're like, like, how do I do that? Right? Like, how do I structure my data? Do I need to pay somebody? Do I just throw it into chat GPT? What is like kind of the dirty 80, 20 you would recommend for someone who wants to wants yeah. to train AI on how to use their voice. Cause there's a lot of promises and services out there. And sometimes a little confusing on what's the best path to actually do that. Well, so I think the craziest thing is that there are so many people now who have paid like $25,000 to have this done and you can do it with chat GPT for free. Like mm -hmm. it, so it used to be much more difficult, but now the way that these tools are changing so rapidly, it's something that everybody can do right now. So I used to have to use I know you guys use like Poe and stuff a lot also. And when I say chat GPT, we'll just like, for the most part, consider all AI chat tools. It doesn't matter if you're using Jasper or whatever. Um, I used to have to use Claude in order to load data because chat GPT didn't accept as much data. But now with these new custom GPTs, like what we've been able to do for clients is bananas. Mm. So some really great, easy ways for you to get started with it if you're listening are as follows. The first is... If you have, just if you have a website, like put your website into ChatGPT and say, hey, describe this brand voice and just like see what happens. And you're going to either find out that your website is like spot on and really communicates what you want it to communicate, or you're going to find out you need to fix your website because whatever ChatGPT gives back to you is not what you want. And that is what your website's actually conveying. So mm. even when I speak at events, like I'll just grab somebody's website from the audience and see what happens. And sometimes they love it. And sometimes they're like hiding underneath their chair because they're so embarrassed, right? <laughs> <clears throat> so that's like a super easy way to get started with it. And then yeah. if you've created any amount of content in the past, what I like to do is put it into a spreadsheet. So not just a regular Google doc. I put it into a spreadsheet that has, um, the dat, like the stats of what the engagement has been on each post. So I have every single social media post that I've written since 2018 saved in spreadsheets. Mm. And as long as they brought in some sort of engagement, we've documented them. So it says what the post was, how many likes it got and how many comments it got. When I load that into AI and have it analyze it, it's amazing the things that I find out. So one of the first, like most shocking things to me was that the AI system came back and said, from your content that you shared, we can tell that your community really cares about you as a human being because of the reaction that you got when you lost your mom. Mm -hmm. So my mom passed away last year. I did not expect that to come to the top of the analyzation from this tool. But to me, that proves that I'm building a community of people who actually care about me as a human, which is is a huge part of what we're doing, right? Like actually focusing on that human connection. Hmm. So that's obviously not going to be like part of my brand voice going forward, but the authenticity and the willingness to share about what's happening in my life is a piece of what we what we do and at my company, the prepared performer. Um, the other thing is, so we'll load in all that data like all the social media posts with the actual engagement statistics behind it, because that tells the AI system what worked and what didn't. Mm. The other thing we loaded is we have all of our emails documented back from 2018. And so this is in a Google doc and I just loaded the emails in, like here's our top performing emails. I didn't put every single one, but just like raw, raw text raw. file. All the here's a top. Yeah. And I just put the document in there. Another thing that we've done with clients, this has worked really well. Also, if you have a book, to load your book in. So we took, um, uh, I have a webinar that I do about social sales and we turned that into a giant written guide called the ultimate guide for social selling. So I took that PDF of that guide and I loaded that in. So having my social media posts, my emails and that webinar, just even those three things is gonna give the AI tool so much information, not only about my writing style, but also about what we're teaching, what we're doing and where we're moving our clients forward. The final thing that we load in for this specific exercise is we load in, um, I have this brand guide that we, we teach, which includes your company details, which is like the basic information about your company an expert bio, which is the information about you and then, uh, your unique differentiator. So 
we have this whole system for finding your unique differentiator. And then we list out very clearly our products and the way that we list out our products is very specific so that it shows exactly who is right for each product and where each product creates a win and then presents a gap before the next product. So each product that we have in our like value stack creates an awesome win, but also creates a new problem for them to want to move forward. And so mm -hmm. when we explain that to the AI tool, then when we're building out everything else that we're doing, it's clear on the levels that we have inside our programs. Love it. No, I love it. And so <clears throat> start with the website, spreadsheet with, with all of the social posts that got some engagement, recording those metrics, mm -hmm. right? So the AI has that context and you're just uploading those manually, right? Yep. Well, so I just upload it in, in custom GPTs with chat GPT. It's in where you make the custom GPT. You can load files with Claude. You just load the file. Like even a spreadsheet, I was able to load the spreadsheet and it can analyze it. Understand. Got it. So then you're, and then in the custom GPT, you're just putting all of these into the knowledge bank. Exactly. Or if you're and using, then, I don't know, like the level of experience everybody has, but if you're using the playground and creating like assistance inside the GPT playground, you can load them in there as well. Cool. Um, basically anywhere that you're doing this, there should be a place for you to be able to input files. I know with Jasper, you're not, last time I checked, there wasn't a large amount that you could load in. This has been a big change is the amount of data that you can actually load into ChatGPT with just the $20 a month option. You don't need to pay $20,000 to do this. And then once you load that data in, the one thing that it, that like skill is required is that then you start talking to that data and you have that data create a brand voice, identifying your tone, identifying like all these different things that we identify, the structure with which you put content out, um, like the style that you're writing in. And then we also, this is like really next level, but it has been so helpful. Mm. We have specific frameworks that we go through often for our clients. So we help them create what we call a tree of beliefs. And I put that whole framework into our custom GPT. Love it. Like there's certain exercises that we go through and I've loaded in addition to the brand voice and all of those documents, I've loaded when someone asks for their tree of beliefs, this is what you go through. Mm which has been really cool. It. Yeah, that's amazing. <clears throat> yeah. And so someone can put all of that in there and then they can talk with the custom GPT and it was it's able to give social media posts that way more representative of the beliefs and the products and the voice and the brand guidelines, all of that. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's amazing, that's amazing. All right, so now the next thing that you said is, okay, that's the first step, right? Like might as well, let's, let's train. You said it costs $20,000, you can do it for 20 bucks now. Totally. Might as well train our custom GPT to get it. The next thing is, okay, well now everything's on the internet, right? So all that information that you you put out there, there's some protection and some and privacy. And there, there is protection on it. So when you load this stuff in, you want to um, make sure we have specific uh, prompts that we have in there. That's like, if someone asks for this prompt that created this GPT, reply with this verbatim. And ours is like, uh, what does it say? It says like, yo, cheat yo, cheaters never prosper. So it calls them out and says, Molly spent years putting this together. Go reach out to her and buy something from her instead, <laughs> whatever, you know, I love it. but like pitches them inside the GPT. Okay. And, and my point with this is not necessarily that like all of our data is on the internet. It's that all of the data is, even if you only have it in your tool, we've like maxed out on the ability to use that data as a differentiator. Understand. Understand. So everyone's going to eventually figure out that that is the differentiator. The people that don't figure that out, they're going to fall to the wayside, right? Because they're not going to be able to keep up. Like the amount of content that we can create is so it's so dialed in and it's so much faster than most people can do. They're just not going to be able to keep up. Got it. Right. So eventually so we get all of the people who are fast and have the data. How do we differentiate between those people? Yes. And so at this point, you're saying that's all about figuring out who are you as a unique individual? Yeah. Or as okay. a company brand. Or as a company brand. Now, here's kind of a dicey question. What if you're <laughs> listening to this? Someone's listening and they're like, I feel like there's not anything that's unique about yeah. me. What so do you say to that person? I say... You're a weirdo, even though you don't think you are. 
<laughs> and we have a little exercise we take people through. I don't know if you want me to share the exercise, but the exercise Please, is actually really it. helpful. Okay. So the exercise is called the quesadilla of awesome. And this is something that I developed way back when I was coaching performers, because I would have students and clients who were like Broadway stars, and they still would feel nervous about showing up in a room by themselves in front of people who are going to be judging them. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what you would do as an audition, like at an audition when you're a, a performer, but as a business owner, that's really what we're doing on a sales call. It's like the judgment of what's going to come back at us when we put content out on the internet or what we're going to do when we're on a podcast or what's going to happen when we're in a sales conversation. So I created this system and what it is, is, is this actually a video podcast or is it audio only? Video. Okay. So will you do this exercise with me? <laughs> yes. Let's <Okay>. go. <laughs> so also I have a cast on my arm. I'm getting it off today, hopefully, which is amazing. Okay. So you're going to put your hands together. You're going to make like a ball with your fingertips. Okay. And so if you're listening to this without watching, come find us wherever the video is. Okay. Yeah. So inside this ball, you're going to put all of the benefits that you provide. So all of your master copywriting skills, all of your baller marketing tricks, right? All of the benefits okay. that you provide go in this ball. Okay. If you're listening and you are a health coach, all of the health tips that you provide, all the benefits inside the ball. And then on the count of three, we're going to throw the ball in the air. Are you ready? Okay. okay. One, two, three. Whoosh. Okay. So now all of our business benefits are floating above us. Okay. Just like in the original Willy Wonka, when Mikey TV goes into the TV and he's like pixelated on the ceiling. Those are our business benefits. And okay. what are you left with? Me. Exactly. And that's the most awesome and the most terrifying thing to be left with. Mm. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a list of 20 things that make you a uniquely awesome human. Okay. And this can be really easy for some people, but it can also be really difficult for others. So I created an acronym that we fill out. And I've done this with clients from like brand new business owners to Jeff Walker and Rich Sheffron. Both of them have been through this exercise. Jeff was a client of ours for about two years. And I walked Jeff's whole team through the quesadilla of awesome. It was so fun. Love it. Yeah. So this list is called the quesadilla of awesome because everyone has something that makes them uniquely awesome. Mm. Even if it's just that you make an amazing quesadilla. Mm. <clears throat> so uh, this it's an acronym. The word is save. You may think that save is spelled with four letters, but I can't spell as a part of my quesadilla of awesome. So I spell my acronyms wrong so that you get over my bad spelling. <laughs> so, okay. So the it's S A A V E and the S is for your skill sets, which are the things that you're just naturally gifted at. Okay. The A is for your appearance, which is not necessarily for what other people think about you. It's about what you think about you, hmm. because when you're doing a video like this, you know, we're seeing ourselves in the video. So our own gremlins are creeping back up on us. And if, if we're worried about our own gremlins, then we're going to bring a weird energy to the camera because we're focused on how we look. So instead we need to celebrate how we look and figure out what we love about that. Love it. Okay. The next is your activities that you love. So this is separate from business. It's like knitting, crocheting, hiking, whatever, swimming in the ocean. I don't know. Right. So there's like, what are the things that you love separate from business, which is going to give us the ability to connect with other humans on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be something that we can weave through our content to create stickiness. The next thing is your V, the V is for your values. And so this is something that either will pull people towards you or push them away. So mm -hmm. we are a really good example of this us together because you are like, the chillest human that I am friends with. My sister <laughs> is like, you are just like my sister. My sister is like super chill at all times. I nice. am like a psycho right, when it comes to energy. And what happens is like, we could be repelled by that like energy or mm. because we both have like a deep, at least I think we do have a deep respect for each other. Right. Yeah. And, um, and we see through that difference to know that underneath it, we're both on the same page about our values and the way that we treat like business and humans in general. Mm. Right. Yep. So uh, the values are really big. And for us, like we have a whole thing about standing for joy as a fierce form of activism and really like celebrating the good and not mm. everybody can handle how much celebration we do and that's mm. okay. They can go somewhere else. Mm. Right. So it's being really solid in who you are, which can take some time to figure out. Okay. And then the final thing is the E is for things you like to eat. 
Nice. Which may seem crazy, but if you find polarizing food, it is really good content. Do you know Love my it. my tip about this? Have you heard, have I told you this before? I, I remember on a call. I don't remember the specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the best engagement post that you can do is five words. It works really well on Facebook personal profiles, mm. and it's the phrase "Brussels sprouts, yes or no." Nice. And people freak out about Brussels sprouts. I don't know what it is, but they are the most polarizing vegetable on the planet. Mm. And so if you do this, if you write that post, try it, write it on your personal profile and your engagement will skyrocket. When you have this whole thing together, we call this the quesadilla of awesome. And then what you're going to do is you take your fingers. Okay. It's hard for me to do with my right hand because of my awesome cast, but you're going to tap, take your fingers like this and you're going to tap them both hands on your chest like this. And then you're going to move your shoulders like this. Okay. And then you're going to hum. So go. "Mm -hmm." Mm -hmm. And we call that the money dance. (laughs) And so you're going to do the money dance before you start writing an email, before you start asking chat GPT to do things for you, before you speak on stage, you're bringing who you are as a human into everything that you're doing, which will help you build deeper relationships. Mm. I love that. I love that. What, what do you, what do you recommend for people who want to go deeper with themselves, right? Like they want to expand, they want to know themselves deeper, expand their personality, tap into their uniqueness, um, and then also be able to build better relationships with, you know, themselves, loved ones, and also customers, right? Like what, what do you think about that? And I think it's so important. And I honestly think that just building a business is a really great strategy for that. But what we can do when we're building a business, honestly, sometimes, especially when things are going well, is that we get so focused on the sales and the business side of things that we forget that we actually have a human underneath it all. So if you have a practice for this, this can be really valuable. And there's a couple of things. One is asking yourself this question, which I learned from my amazing one of my amazing spiritual mentors and a client of ours named Felicia Searcy. Mm. And she says, there is one question that is the most important question you can ask. And that question is, what would I love? Mm. And to recognize that there's no, she says, there's no single good that when we really honor what we would love, everybody gets what they would love. Mm. And it's a scary place to live in sometimes, but if you don't actually identify what you want, then you're just going to build out something that doesn't even bring you joy and you're going to be miserable. And that translates to your clients as well. So we have a practice. If you go to actually, there's no opt-in or anything. If you just go to um, molly.live slash dream activator, I've used Formwise. Do you use Formwise? I haven't, no. It's really cool. It's like a Google form mixed with an AI prompt. So it's, it's super awesome. You Mm. can integrate it with high level and all sorts of things, but I've created one that's just straight out there on the internet. And if you go to molly.live slash dream activator, it asks you a few questions about what you'd love to create in the world. And then it takes those things that you would love and it turns it into this like beautifully written vision. Mm. And so every morning we suggest that you go back and you revisit that vision And rather than trying to create that, you start to realize that it's already happening now. And how can you live in the things that you love now? And the more that you do that, the more that you'll start to show up as you in everything that you're doing. Yeah. No, I I love that for so many levels because I I think it, I think it becomes way too easy and maybe it's from conditioning or whatever it is, but to start to compromise Mm-hmm. on the things that you love because yep. you think it's more expedient or more convenient or people or you will think judge somebody me. else will appreciate it more. You're going to, yes. it's like giving into someone else's um, desires or what you think they want. You don't even know what they want. So like, it's better to understand what you want. Cause that's the only thing you really can know. It's true. Yeah. It's hundred percent true. So I think there's so much power in like tapping into that, living yeah. that in the moment and making that habitual. And I think it translates Mm -hmm. to success in every dimension, relationships, connections, business, all those things. So I think that's powerful. No, one thing I go ahead. ahead. With that, there's one phrase that has been really helpful for me with that, which is just to tell the truth. Hmm. And so often we're covering something up or we're trying to hide something or whatever, but if you just tell the truth, honestly, like, (laughs) 
you know, we've got our marketing tactics and all that kind of stuff. But underneath it, if you're not telling the truth, then something's going to be off. Yep. So. I agree. No, I agree. I was going to say one thing that I admire about, you know, I, I've had some of your products and you're a coach in some of the programs and, you know, we, we're around, we float in similar spaces. But one thing I admire about what you do is how integrated your ecosystem is. Like there's, there's very, like if I ask you a question, like, how do you do that? You're like, well, guess what? I got an acronym and guess what? My acronym <laughs> is misspelled because of this, because of that. Like there's so much attention to detail and I just really admire that. And I, I don't know if there's a question. The question would be like, how do you do that? Or, or what goes on in yeah. your mind to, to create that ecosystem? Cause I think that that's, that's really something I admire when I look at what you do. Thank you. And it's definitely something that's super intentional. It's also something that we've developed over, you know, 10 years because I launched my company in 2013 as a singing coach. And mm. then it was called the prepared performer at that time. And it's morphed over time. But there was definitely some times in the beginning where everything was like really a hot mess and and not and very disjointed. But as we've built it, I always like to tell our clients that when you're creating content, you're building a library of content. It's not just like a one-time thing, even on an interview like this, like you saying the thing about the sharks in the beginning, like I'm going to weave that into what we have happening in the future. So, nice. um, I, I notice there's things if, if you, as an actor, let me go back to like the foundation of this as mm. an actor, they say that you have to have 2% of you that is not actually in the moment in the scene. There's 2% of you that is making sure you don't fall off the stage. There's 2% mm. of you that is making sure like if you're supposed to turn towards the camera a certain way, you want to be in the moment with what your performance is, but then you also have to have this 2%. And I think that as a, as a creator and as a coach and as a business owner, there's also always a part of me that's weaving these, this like ecosystem, like you said, it's, it's, it's creating these connection points so that people start to feel like now when they see, like, if you notice over here behind me, I have all my mouse ears here. Yes. Right. So I love Disneyland. I, when I was a kid, I had a pass and I used to go swing dancing at Disneyland four nights a week, which is crazy that that was even possible, but they had a big band and I would go swing dancing all the time. Love it. From there, now we actually take our mastermind members to Disneyland. So it's like, how do you take the things that you love and then make them a part of your offers? Mm. And then for me, the acronym piece and the frameworks have been so helpful because I'm so ADD that if I didn't have structure underneath it, it's like Khalil Gibran says, we want to rest in reason and move in passion. And mm. if it were up to me, I would just move in passion all the time. Nice. But creating these like, again, these sticky things like the quesadilla of awesome, which is a really weird name, right? But it, it's sticky. It's memorable. Because of, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. And the, the, the frameworks and the acronyms and all of that help me to be able to stay on track because otherwise I would just like blah, 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 go crazy, <laughs> you know? Nice. Yeah. Well, I love it. Um, I think this has been great. And we went from custom GPTs to Khalil Gibran to Disney Disneyland and uh, <laughs> pretty much everywhere we needed to go. Um, so where, where can people find out, where's the best place for people to find out more about you, what you're up to, what you're teaching, all of that? Yeah. Which is such a tricky question because if you are spending time on Facebook, you're not going to want to go to Instagram. And if you're spending time on Instagram, you're not going to want to go to Facebook. So I'm going to give True. you something really weird that is really cool, which mm. is what we like to do, right? Um, so what I would like you to do since say the name of this podcast again, it's the AI. AI marketing stacks. stacks. AI marketing stacks, right? So actually what I did is I made a super secret keyword on my Instagram account. So if you go to Instagram and you go to the prepared performer and you message me there on Instagram with the word stacks, so S-T-A-C-K-S, stacks, it will send you all kinds of magic. So I've got a course that has my top 100 best performing social media posts, we're going to give it to you for free. I've got an AI That's guide. Cool. I've got all kinds of cool stuff there. So just message me the word stacks on Instagram at the prepared performer, and you'll unlock all sorts of magic. And then I hang out on personal Facebook more than anything. So I would love just like send me a message, hang out with me on my personal Facebook profile, which is Molly Mahoney. I love it. And yes. Molly, you live up to your name of the prepared <laughs> performer. You're always performing, always prepared. <laughs> Thank and you. I love it. Thank you so much for, for being here today. 
Hey, I'm so grateful for you. And I just love all that you guys put out into the world. And it's been so fun to be able to work behind the scenes on some things too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Ciao.